Uh, congratulations to all of you. This is, movie has become such a phenomenon, and, uh, and it must be just fun uh, to go around and see this kind of reaction. When I asked how many have, were just seeing it for the first time, all the hands went up. So people are just having that sense of discovery and, and loving it, despite all the talk about it. It's not disappointing. Uh, Michelle, first of all, congratulations on the DGA Award uh, last Saturday night. That's really exciting. And, uh, You know, and so many other, all the Oscar nominations and the British Academy Award nominations, 10 Academy Award Woo! nominations. Woo! Woo! Best um, did you have any idea when you came up with this idea, you know, of doing a little, little black and white silent movie, that you'd be here at this moment, you know? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, 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 I, I, it was really amazing. Yeah, we were looking away. I remember when we, we were going back to Paris with Bernice, we were looking uh, away to screen the movie. I mean, for the crew and for the cast to see the movie. So we wanted to print a DVD, to send it here to the producer. And um, so when you are at this level, you don't think about the scouting mission. <laughs> Well, let me ask you how you did come up with this idea, because you've done this, uh, wonderful movies before, including those terrific OSS uh, films uh, with Jean Dujardin and Berenice Bejo. But um, how did you come up with this idea? Because nobody's really had this idea in 80 years. So this is, this is, this is, this is kind of a new idea. <laughs> Mel Brooks made a silent movie. And then some guys would, would there was a, an American director who did uh, sidewalk stories in the 80s. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, so then, from time to time, someone does a silent movie. And uh, I think there's a lot of directors actually who had that desire, but they didn't do it. And this is good for me because I did. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it was a desire for a long time. I think for a lot of directors, it's a fantasy. It's it's like the, the the purest way to tell a story, and it's very challenging. And um, and also, I mean, I mean, as an audience, I really love the way it works, the way the story is told, and uh, how you're involved in the storytelling process and how you participate. And uh, I mean, really, the device of the silent movie is, is great. So. Uh, yeah, I had this desire for a long time, and, and thanks to the OSS 117, which have been successes in France, uh, I, I could take my chance to, to make this one. Yeah. And James Lovato lost his position and was fired and lost his friends and was depressed, and then he found a way out, which was the theater, and now we're in the same boat again. So I, I think people recognize, Michelle has said, that the story is a contemporary story. It's, it happens to be set in the 20s, but all of us can relate to what jo the arc of George's character, what he goes through, and Berenice's uh, character's, the support that she has for George Valentine. Um, it's important for another reason, because I think it shows to audiences, and most especially to filmmakers, the idea that you don't have to make films in the uh, conventional wisdom and conventions of Hollywood, which seems to get more and more complicated and more and more distant from recognizable human experience, you know, immediate felt experience, into car chases and explosions. And it's very, very inspiring that somebody can make the Michelle calls them devices, but the simplicity of this form and its form of storytelling, that the effect that it has on audiences, I, I think Hollywood will notice, I think everybody else will notice, oh, it's really the artist in us that creates the event, not the technology that's thrown at a poor or uh, much better story. And, and Michelle, I want to throw some props. You, you see why you wanted to make it, so you see the good part of the of the thing. But but the script was really um, for me the most uh, challenging part. After on set, I mean, for me it was like another movie. I, I am my shots, the, the actors, the, the location, the camera, the crew. Technically, it was the same. 
Now, Penelope, you're the only one up here who's actually made silent movies before. Because <laughs> she was in Chaplin and within Chaplin. Why don't you tell the story? But... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm the veteran. Um, I, uh, I, uh, I did a movie called Chaplin with Robert Downey Jr. And I played Edna Provian. Uh, thank you. So that you got bro. Um, and um, I played a silent film actress in that. And so... Um, we, we reenacted some of the scenes that Chaplin and Edna did together. So I had, the whole movie was in silent, it was about a silent film star, Charlie Chaplin, but um, but yes, I did have experience, which could have helped in, in the casting, perhaps, when they came to me, because I'm you're making a silent film, I'm, I'm the go-to girl. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I don't know if I'll get a third chance, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was, um, it was, I was so surprised that when, you know, your agent calls and says, okay, well, um, they're making a silent film, it's black and white, and, um, there's no money, um, it's not that big a part, and, um, the director is a name that I can't even pronounce, um, nor have I ever heard of, and, uh, the two leads are in a cast, and they're French, and, uh, it's about Hollywood. <laughs> Sounds like my kind of film. Um, and uh, I was definitely surprised, and I was kind of, in, well, very intrigued and um, very excited, actually, because I love, I'm very nostalgic about old Hollywood and the 20s, and I live in a home that was built in the 20s. Dolores Del Rio lived in my home, who's a silent film star. And um, so I, any opportunity I have to pretend I live in the golden age of Hollywood, I, I take. Um, I had no idea anyone would see the movie. I felt like I would come out unscathed if the movie bombed and we all made fools of ourselves. <laughs> um, and if it didn't, then, you know, and here we are. It's, <laughs> I really did it because of my love and passion for old movies, and, and Michelle shared that passion, and I think everybody who did this movie had that same feeling about doing this film. But there were a lot of actors, I have to tell you, that my agent said didn't even want to go near it. And I'm sure they're kicking themselves right now. So <laughs> I'm glad some people said no and I can say yes. <laughs> Telling the story. So there's a sort of a discovery while you're doing it. Oh, that does not kind of count. And then you have to think, well, what happened? What am I, how do I convey this? Uh, what happens to my face? And, you know, we're not actually very much used to what happens in your face. It has to happen spontaneously. And you have some way of gauging that spontaneity and where you pitch it by the line of your dialogue. Which, although you're saying in this particular case, it's not being recorded, but you still have the line. Because it's not telling the story, you're sort of a, a little bit at sea. And, of course, you trust the director that the director will say, it's a little over the top. Um, you didn't say that to me. Um, <laughs> my goodness. I said it to me. <laughs> <laughs> to each his own. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, you have the added advantage, of course, that the music creates the context. Uh, and as Michelle says, it's the antagonist, so it's something to play off of and sometimes against. Um, the music is a big support uh, to have, and uh, is the music going on on the set? Is the music is going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of it the same music, some different. All of it evocative, uh, chosen for a reason. Um, and it, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a little disconcerting at the first, but then you get used to it, and then you realize you're, you know, responding to it the way we do to music, uh, that it affects our behavior and how we feel about what's happening between two people, sort of, it's the ground. And so I, for me personally, I don't think it uh, changed anything. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm big and I'm used to, I'm a, I'm a big chauffeur, and, I, <laughs> and, I'm, I, and I'm, I'm used to, uh, I don't have to do much um, and have never really been asked to do too much, but it is to just, convey it, you know, with uh, my presence and my thought, and it seemed to work perfectly in, in this film. And um, women in the 20s held themselves differently, they had different mannerisms, a woman of my stature, you know, with wealth and, 
you know, a sense of importance. And um, but you know, so much of that, you know, helps with the costumes, um, with the hair, the makeup, which took about two and a half hours. Um, they say, be careful what you wish for. Uh, it was it was intense, but it um, it really helped me get into character and. You know, in the sets, these beautiful sets, and with porcelain and china and and, um, and the music. So you know, and we're reacting to each other. We are in the moment emotionally and everything. So, but because you're not hearing the sound of our voices, and as actors, we're, we we rely so much on the sound of our voices and 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 to convey. The So funny. <laughs> do you have any books? I do. I have a book. Really? Yeah, they gave us a book, which is so funny that it's like fabric. I know. I, I, I always want to I know. Well, no, no, no.